schools. And on behalf of the whole Westside High School, school family, and community, let us say welcome to Westside High School for the Communities and Schools kickoff and celebration today. Let's give all of our guests a warm round of Westside applause. First Lady Justice, Dr. Stephen Payne, West Virginia State Superintendent of Schools, West Virginia State Board of Education members, Coach Bob Pruitt, famous and renowned Marshall University football coach, Randall Reed Smith, curator of the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History, Wyoming County Board of Education members, and all of the support that comes along with those positions. Thank you for your support and for traveling to Westside High School today. This is a big deal to us, and it means so much for you to be here. The best of Westside High School was on display and at work yesterday evening and this whole week. It's homecoming at Westside High School. And the floats, which involved parents, students, teachers, a collective effort to make something that would rival the Rose Parade, culminating in a huge parade that we think rivals Macy's Parade. Both communities, the Bailey'sville area, the Oceana area, we take that for granted now because we are all renegades at Westside High School. They come together for fun and fellowship. Class spirit dances and festivities, people pulling together and working together to support this school. And then a blessed ending last night with a circle that was too big to be on the football field going around the track for a student at Wyoming East High School and a student at West High High School, Emma and Dalton, and lead, culminating in a prayer was absolutely beautiful and affirming and a testament to the spirit of this community and of this school. Communities in schools will use that same momentum, that same team spirit to pull people together to help children graduate from high school. And students, that's what we want for you. We want you to be happy while you're learning and we want you to graduate and have a good quality of life throughout your whole life. That's what, we do. that's what we want, and that's why we do what we do. And communities and schools is going to be a huge, powerful tool to help us in that, in that mission. Our goal this morning is set at 100%. And you know, Westside already has a pretty good graduation rate. You hover in the high 80s, low 90s. You've even been rewarded at the state level for your graduation rate in years past but we're not going to be satisfied and we don't want you to be satisfied until we have 100% graduation rate, whatever it takes. Thank you to Mr. Keith Stewart, principal at Westside, and Kathy Bruny, the coordinator of communities and schools, and Ms. Robin Hall, our assistant superintendent for secondary schools, and the whole school team here at Westside and the central office team for making this happen this morning. And as I said, this ceremony and, and rally this morning is a big deal to us. And with that in mind, it's my great honor and my pleasure to introduce a true champion of education and, for, and children. A man who works every day to bring people and resources together to make phenomenal things happen for education in the state of West Virginia. Please welcome Dr. Stephen Payne, our State Superintendent of Schools. Coach Pruitt, this looks like a Marshall uh, Stadium, and they're all packing them in right before kickoff. Does it not look that way? Looks great to me. <laughs> I saw Coach Pruitt trying to recruit the guy with the guns down there on the way in. Ah, <laughs> uh, there he is. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my Lord. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. A great day the good Lord made. Glad to see all of you, and we're thrilled to be here uh, to, to kick off a program in Wyoming County that we think can be extremely important to each and every one of you. 
Uh, I'm, I'm in my job a second time. Uh, President Gee up at WU uh, said that, see, he'd been up there, he's on his second time as president at WU too. So when he saw me recently, he said, welcome to the club, Mr. Superintendent. I said, what's that? And he said, well, if you mess it up the first time, they have you come back a second time and try to fix it. So I'm on my second time as state superintendent of schools. And I'm here uh, primarily because of one man, it's Governor Jim Justice. He uh, believes what I believe with regard to education. He believes what our State Board of Education members, Deborah Sullivan, Miller Hall, if you'd raise your hands there, in the West Virginia State Board of Education. And uh, I saw the stars all line up, and so I'm back. And there's also a person that I'd like to introduce to you uh, in shortly that's very important to the governor. And she saw communities and schools working really, really well in Greenbrier County for those students that had the opportunity to be a part of the program, they had a 100% graduation rate, 100%, which is critical. I will tell you that, that beyond high school, set your sights on something else, whether it's a two-year degree or an industry credential or a four-year degree because you're going to need it. A simple high school education should be your goal now, but that's not the stopping point. And so this program was just extremely important to the kids in Greenbrier County. So when she came into office as first lady, she called over and, and said, you know, I have this program, could we talk about it? And we like it so much that we're partnering with her to try to take this program to McDowell, to Berkeley in the Eastern Panhandle, up by DC, up in that area up there, and most importantly to you today, the winners of West side, is that the best side? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. The best side high school, right? Homecoming, now who you play? Independence. Independence, okay. You gonna stomp them? Yeah. All right. You don't sound too convincing to me right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to assume that you're going to do that. I think the guy with the guns is going to have something to do with that there. Where's your, where are you at again? Hold your hand up there. All right, there he is. I saw Coach Pruitt trying to recruit you. He'll probably be out there trying to recruit some. He still, he still bleeds, bleeds green and white. He'll probably talk about that here shortly. But anyway, I would like to present to you this morning someone who... Uh, I found uh, to be an extremely special person. She cares for the students of West Virginia and for all of the students here at Westside High School. She may be the kindest and most authentic and most sincere person that I've ever met in my entire life. I love working with her. May I present to you the First Lady of West Virginia, Ms. Kathy Justice. here there are so many people here that care for you all today if they didn't care for you all and want the very best for you they wouldn't be here today so remember that in your heart we're here to be your friend to help you and let's let's do a cheer what's a renegade cheer that we can get this kicked off today our community is in school that we're going to do a kickoff cheer okay I just want to thank you all. This is our kickoff rally today. Uh, we have some really important people that are here today that, as I said before, that care about you. The communities and schools, let me tell you what this is. If you, if you all, it's really, really simple. We're gonna be in the schools. There'll be 
be like a site coordinator and this person is kind of uh, going to work with you all and just have a place that you all can come. If you all need something, if you want to talk, if you have a problem, we're here to help you and be your friends. Not to judge anybody, not to do anything and just always remember that. We're here as your friends and that's it because we care for you. Um, I just want to introduce uh, someone that's uh, going to get things started today. Do we, is uh, Coach Pruitt, are you next? I think so. Okay, this is Coach Bob Pruitt. All of you all know him. He's wonderful. He's the best advocate of Marshall of West Virginia and the communities and schools because he cares for kids like you can't imagine. And you all aren't kids, you're young adults. So listen, let's give it up for Coach Bob Pruitt. He's uh, was in the hospital yesterday. He's out. He has congestive heart failure and retaining water. And uh, the doctor just wouldn't let him come. So uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions about WBU. I'm sure you'll get maybe a different answer from me than you would he. But uh, I want to tell you how excited I am to be here. This is a thrill. First of all, when I was in high school, I'm not sure they'd let me in this assembly. If they did, they'd have security beside me because when I was a youngster at your age, if you cut my head open, footballs and basketballs and girls would all you'd see in there, <laughs> trying to find the next person to dance with. So, I am thrilled to death to be here because Coach and I, this is what we've decided to do with our lives after we retire. The state of West Virginia, this uh, University of Marshall and WVU have done so much for us in our lives and we want to give back because we think this is a great place to grow up, a great place to get an education, and we have chosen to for it to be a great place for us to end our lives here. And what we want to do is help. And we want to help you and help you do whatever you want to do and whatever you want to achieve. Growing up in East Beckley, West Virginia, playing sports at Woodrow Wilson High School, my daddy was a coal miner. He worked at Helen and Black Eagle. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. He started in the coal mines in 1933. Worked with a pick and a shovel. He had a fourth grade education, but he had a doctorate degree in love. My mother had an eighth grade education. I was the youngest of five boys. I thought anything more than a C was wasted energy. Didn't know where I was going, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. The coach at Woodrow Wilson High School took me under his arm. The teachers there took me under their arm. 
and taught me that if I wanted what I wanted to do because I knew I did not want to go into the coal mines because when I was a kid, I went to Helen and Black Eagle on Thanksgiving and Christmas when they gave out the paper bags of candy and oranges to all the miners and so, so I'm sitting around with coal dust all over. My dad had black lung and silicosis. I saw how hard they worked. I went into the, I went into the coal mines that was low coal. They couldn't stand up and water was running down all over you. Daddy worked hard. In the 50s, when I'm right ready to go into high school, the mines go down like they did a few years ago and he didn't have any work. He didn't have an education. Didn't have a degree. He and I were loading cinder blocks, unloading cinder blocks, making a, a dollar an hour and stacking them together to try to earn a living. We earned eight dollars that day and it cost us two dollars for the gloves they gave us and wore out gloves in a day. So we made six. I saw the coach and the principal and the teachers wearing a white shirt and a tie. I saw the coach take me under, under his arm and made me come to school. So I had an opportunity to fulfill my dream. When I went to college, all I wanted to do is I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. That was my dream. I fulfilled my dream. When I graduated from Marshall University, my goal and my dream was to come back and be the football coach. And we did it. I want you to set your goal and your dream to whatever it is and let us help you. Fair? Fair? Let's go get it. inspirational words from the legendary coach Bob Pruitt and our hearts and our prayers go out to coach Neyland he's a he's a great friend of coach Pruitt and, and uh, so we wish him a speedy recovery and you know all that he's done uh, at West Virginia as coach Pruitt has done at Marshall University I want to just take a time uh, to introduce a couple other people on the stage that are very important to you in their support of communities and schools it's a program that taps into the community around you. And, you know, when I, when I was young, how many, how many all, uh, of you all are the oldest child in the family? Raise your hands. Yeah, me too. There are many times that I sure wish I would have had an older brother or sister to have a chance to talk through some issues. Because as much as I love my mother and my father, I just needed to talk to somebody to help me be a little bit more successful in school. So I had Mr. Denny and Mr. Henry and Ms. Crawford and I could talk to them a little bit. But uh, this program connects you not only with your teachers and the adults here, but also with adult mentors that can give great advice such as you just heard from our champion, Coach Pruitt. And we chose West Side, the best side, Right? <laughs> and some of your other colleagues in Wyoming County because you're already winners. And as Coach Pruitt said, we want you to think big, exceed your reach, dream. What is your goal? And each and every one of you in the good Lord's eyes is so valuable in this room that you need to understand just how valuable you are and what a difference each and every one of you can make to our society, not only in Wyoming County, but in our great state of West Virginia and in our great country, the United States of America. 
Let me introduce some other folks that are going to help us along the way uh, from the Wyoming Cody County Board of Education. Mike Pritchard, Betty England, and Mike Davis. We have some corporate sponsors for this program throughout the state of West Virginia. They have a tremendous amount of corporate responsibility because they also believe in you. Anybody drive Toyota trucks? I got a full run. I love it. Well, from Toyota the Corporation here in West Virginia, I'd like to introduce you to Jeremy Bias, please. appreciate Mr. Stewart and all the hospitality. I tell you what, I've been in front of a few schools in my time. You might have the best well-mannered student body that I've seen in a long, long time. So, <laughs> and now, while you have the legendary coach Bob Pruitt here, Bobby Pruitt, he has agreed to take uh, questions from you if you have any questions about anything that he might be able to offer his advice we want you to have that opportunity and take advantage of that opportunity right now so who's first yes ma'am as a coach who or what has motivated you you know that that encompasses a lot okay I think early on was the the coaches that I had in high school. So I didn't, when I was in grade school, we went through the eighth grade, so I didn't get to go to the seventh, eighth, and ninth junior high. So when I got into ninth grade, they all had their team set. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but the coaches encouraged me and we, we were able to go on. I think that, uh, uh, and then I'm like, all of us, you have your set of people right now. I know that uh, one of my former great players, uh, Chad Pennington's family's from right here in Oceana. And everybody's proud of him. And, and I was growing up with a guy named Jerry West, who was a great basketball player at WVU and some uh, outstanding players. And I listened to the radio and been playing because uh, to be honest with you, we were, we lived on a what a paved road. We didn't have TV until I got I got uh, about the tenth grade. So I mean, so we, it's just different athletes watching people inspire uh, players, uh, people I played with, and uh, and it, it it becomes a, a a driven thing because there's no matter what we do, it's not easy. Nothing's easy. But the one thing that you have to have, you have to have belief. You have to believe in yourself. I, I believe the coach when they told me this is what I had to do academically to go to college to play football. And when I went to Marshall, I played football, I wrestled and I ran track. I played all the sports there because I just loved to play. And But you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in the system you're in that they're leading you to get to where you need to be because if you don't believe it you won't do it does that make sense you really have to believe believe in yourself believe you can get it done believe that you can do it and stick with your dream and stick with your beliefs okay another question Uh, what would you say to your team after a huge upset? Well, thanks, guys. I could stay here another year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, uh, what I really tried to do with our football team, okay, to preface this, I don't think we ever went into a game that we didn't think we could win or would win. No matter who it was, no matter who it was, so we tried to have the belief factor I was just talking about. I would congratulate them. I would tell them to have fun, but understand, I didn't have a lot of rules 
Because when you set rules, you, you, you have deadlines. You can't do this. Once they don't do that, then you have action. I've tried to work with people. But the one rule, one of the biggest rules I'd have, and I'd tell them, don't do anything tonight that would embarrass mom and dad. Okay? Well, let me tell you how much we believe. How many people have watched Clemson University on, on television play a football game? You see the stadium, there's 90,000 people. They're holding that tiger they're playing. Their team dresses in a locker room here. They get on a bus and they go to the top of the stadium. And they pet a rock and they run down the hill and the crowd changes. Chairs and everything and there's 90,000 people yelling, you can't hear, hold that tiger, hold that tiger. We go down and play them in 99, okay? We're just a bunch of little old country boys from West Virginia wearing green. But when they got to the top of the hill, we were down the bottom of it because they come on down. <laughs> Nobody done that to them. You know how we, you know what happened at the end of the day? They got their tails kicked. You understand? <laughs> You know, I, I suggested that to the team. You gonna be a man, or you gonna be a boy dog? You gonna get off the porch and hunt? You know what I'm saying? Or are we gonna go down here and listen to them have fun? Another question? Why did you become a coach? That was the guy that I looked up to the most, other than my daddy. He kept me straight. I've never, now I understand this, I'm no angel, okay? And I've, but I've never used alcohol or tobacco. I did have a drug habit. I had a real drug problem when I was in high school. My mother drug me to church. She drug me to MYF. She drug me to Boy Scouts. She drug me all over East Beckley trying to keep me straight. <laughs> Any more? Okay. What has been the hardest thing you've had to overcome in your career? Keep believing. Uh, for instance, become the head football coach at Marshall. I was a high school coach for about 14 years. Wanted to get into college if I wanted to fulfill my dream. Took a $10,000 pay cut to bring my wife and three boys to Barbersville, West Virginia and become assistant coach at Marshall. Okay. Realized while I was there four years, I needed to move around to get my resume up to where I could get to where I wanted to be. Okay. Go to Wake Forest University. Well, at Wake Forest is a great academic institution. Okay. But we were playing so many homecomings, we started taking our own float because we weren't very good. You know, Saturday's a great place to work and everything was super about it. It was a hard win school. The academic requirements were extremely high. Smallest university in Division I athletics. So, but the, the Marshall job opened up in 1990, okay? And I come back and interviewed. Lee Moon, who was the athletic director, told me, he says, Coach, he knew me, he says, you're a good coach, but right now our program, we're starting to turn it around a little bit. And we need somebody that's big time coaching in, on going to bowl games and being on TV and stuff. TV was just getting real popular then where there's a lot of people on. 
Well, that wasn't going to happen at Wake Forest. So I had to come back and tell my wife, we got to move. And we left it there. So I got me a job at Ole Miss. SEC, two years. We go to the Gator Bowl. We go to the Liberty Bowl. So I'm getting it going. Some issues going on at the school there. So I, I realize now if I stay here, I need to, I need to make them out of the move. So I go to Tulane in New Orleans. Okay? I'm there two years. Now we're in another academic school. Okay? So I get a chance next to go to the University of Florida as the defensive coordinator. Because what I'd done at Wake Forest when we played Duke, I was the defensive coordinator and we beat Duke and Coach Steve Spurrier was the coach. He remembered that. He offered me the job. Now I'm at the University of Florida. We lose one game in two years and play for the national championship and the SEC conference champion two years in a row and went, go to bowl games and you know, got it all. The job opens up again at Marshall. I go, I said, okay, Lee, you told me this is what I had to do. We plan for national championships. We're going for bowl games. I did my part. I want the job. I got it. So believe it in yourself, setting a game plan, and not giving up. It took me 31 years to get there. It's a long time. There one more question. How did you keep you and your team motivated in a time of doubt and stress? <clears throat> well, it, I'll tell this this story. The first four years I was at Marshall. The first year we went 15 and 0 and won the national championship. The next year we move up to Division I football from 1AA. We go 10 and 3, playing the first bowl game in the history, in history of Marshall. 50 years. First team that ever moved up from 1AA to Division I to, to do that. Okay. The next year we're 12 and 1. And the next year we're 13 and 0, ranked ninth in the nation in Division I football. The next year. And we're 50 and four after four years. The next year we start off and we're two and four after six games. Two and four now. We done lost four games. That's more than we've lost in the past four years. See what I'm saying? We lost to Michigan State, North Carolina, Western Michigan, and Toledo. We lost to West. We lost our first home ball game. We only lost three home football games while we was there. So remember that tonight. You don't lose at home. Okay. So what are we going to do? So I, I got after we got beat forty to nothing by Toledo. Okay. So I called all the guys together. The best players don't make the best team, but the best team always wins. Guys, we've got the best players. We're not the best team. You understand? Doing that, I have them all in the room like this. And I've given the starting offense flashlights. Starting defense flashlights. Starting special teams flashlights. I went down to Lowe's and bought them myself. Okay? And I said, here's our problem. We got nine, ten people doing it right and one guy doing it wrong. Here's the starting quarterback for the night. Okay? He calls a play. He fumbles the snap. Everybody else doing it right. He, he didn't do it. He did it wrong. So I had them stand up, the 11 offensive guys, and they had the room dark and they turned their lights on, their flashlights on. He turned his off. Ten guys doing it right, one guy doing it wrong. We call it trap play. 
both guards pull at the same time running at each other. So I mean, that nine guys doing it right, two guys doing it wrong. He gave an example for that, gave an example on defense where a linebacker is supposed to blitz in this hole, he doesn't go, they hand the ball off and go for a touchdown. Ten guys doing it right, one guy doing it wrong. You win as a team. In everything you do, you win as a team. Special teams. So then, have them all stand up. They all turn their lights on, they light it up the auditorium. Together, we can win, okay? Then I gave each one of them, I got up with a band of rubber bands, and I tried to pull a whole big package of rubber bands that couldn't break it. Took out one, snapped it. If we all band together, 11 guys doing it right, nobody doing it wrong, we band together, we win as a team. We won the rest of the games, won the Mid-American Conference, won our bowl game. I made them wear that rubber band to ever practice to every class the rest of that season because we're going to band together. Understand? If you want to achieve something, you believe in yourself, you band together, get people to help you, just as we're here to help you, we're banded together with you to help you be great, to help you fulfill your dream with God's will We'll all graduate, we'll all go on, but it won't be easy. But we're going to be here when you, when you stumble, we're going to pick you up and help you. And that's the reason we're here. Bobby Pruitt, national champion coach, coach of Chad Pennington, Hall of Famer Randy Moss. You've been mossed. Remember that? All right. Let's give him another round of applause. Please. We have recognized some other very important people in this room right now. And I want to do that because they're in their own right heroes and champions. We're all our teachers. I see them along the back wall, maybe. We all want to thank you. You're a major part of this team. We want to thank you for all that you do on a daily basis from the depths within. And uh, we are 55 United. And you're going to have a solution. I heard it from the governor himself. He knows how important this long-term PEIA fix is. He has one. He's going to let this committee, whatever, do their work, and he's going to see if he likes the solution or not. But he has one, and I heard him promise in front of 600 people that he has one. So I want you all to know as teachers, you got a governor in your corner fighting hard for you, too. With that said, now, there's a guy up here on this stage. I want you to pick him out who might have the most enthusiasm of any <laughs> person. <laughs> okay, you getting a clue? Randall Reed Smith, come on up here. Hi everybody, my name is Randall Reed Smith and it is my honor and pleasure to serve as Governor Jim Justice's curator for the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History. And I know you've heard me say this many times, Coach, but God only made football so we could have a halftime show. <laughs> and I'm here to talk about how we're here to help you with the arts. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, we, and through our programs at the Culture and History, we do the VH1 Save the Music Foundation grant. And we're going to be able to put $35,000 worth of free instruments over at Oceana Middle School. It is um, a K-3 program. 
And to hear people talk about Oceana, I want to tell you this, Coach, I bet you didn't even know. Uh, Oceana, I grew up in Bartersville, next to Huntington. And Oceana was very important on my mind for two reasons. One, we had a basketball coach at Bartersville. His name was Bill Stewart. Cabell Middle and High School, he was from in Oceana. But more importantly, the name Denise Pennington, the mother of Chad Pennington, was my student teacher for arts at Bartersville High School when she was at Marshall. And she was one of the very first people who told me I could do anything. And that's what we're just here to say. What the coaches said is so right. I was very lucky. I grew up on Mary Kay Pink Cadillacs, and you can do it enthusiasm. And Mary Kay always said, the only goal you never reach is the goal you don't set. So set your goals, and remember, it, do, it doesn't matter where you are right now. It only matters what direction you're going in. We're here to help you. Mary Kay always said, love and praise people to success. It's true, you can laugh all you want, but it is, you know, you can do anything. Just real quick, I grew up in Bartersville. I twirled a baton in front of my high school band 45 years ago. I went off as a little boy to the Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati on a scholarship and sang 20 years as a professional opera singer, 14 years in Europe, and did it because I was told I can do it. So whatever your dreams are, you can do it, and if you need somebody to encourage you, you call me, 304-558-0220, and ask for the commissioner. So I need my cheer girls up here now. Get up here, girls. Come on. Come on, girls. at Indiana University. I went to the opera school at Indiana U University. Yes, I was at the game where he threw the chair with Purdue. But I had, as my voice teacher, the Bobby Knight of the music school. And here's what she always said about the arts. The most noble of the arts is teaching. So say thank you to your teachers every day. Listen to them. And again, if you need somebody to tell you that you're going to make the finish line, 304-558-0220. Ask for the commissioner curator. Thank you, guys. Thank you, girls. OK. And you're going to hear from Mr. Randall Reed Smith at the end of our assembly to lead us in a rousing rendition of Country Roads. Okay. <laughs> all right. We have a couple of students that have some words of wisdom for all of us today. I'd like to bring to the stage at this time Caitlin Sanders and Sidney Lambert, if you'd come up.
How are you? Here you are. Caitlin. Caitlin, good to yeah, meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Wow. It's hard to believe that just six years ago, I was walking the halls of this school as a freshman. And just over two years ago, I was a senior walking across the graduation stage in the gym. Reflecting on my four years here, I can most definitely say it was anything but boring and nothing shy of awesome. There was always something for my teenage self to get involved in. I played golf where I was on three state tournament teams. I attended numerous camps, including the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Conference and the 2015 Governor's Honors Academy. I was able to participate in Math Field Day, the Young Writers Contest, and the Social Studies Fair, where Sydney and I ended up being state runners up. I was an active member of Highway, where I was able to volunteer in the community and go to youth and government, where I could argue my case to my heart's desire. I was a part of the pet club when the Clear Fork Crazies first officially got the name, and everybody we played was trying to figure out what Fear the Fork meant of which they found out very quickly. When it came time to prepare for college, tutoring and supplemental resources were provided for when it came time to take the ACT to ensure that every student had the best chance at the promised scholarship. Teachers were spending their lunch and what little breaks they did get inside and outside of school writing recommendation letters. The counselors were constantly setting up college visits, bringing representatives in from Concord, West Virginia University, Marshall, Southern, etc. The list was endless. They were constantly printing off transcripts, sealing them, and making sure they reached their final destination, which had to be a very monotonous task for a class my size. When I graduated from here, I had 14 college credit hours just from AP classes alone, which covered a huge portion of my general education requirements. This allowed me to jump straight into classes that were required for my major, which effectively puts me 11 credits into my senior year by the end of this semester, and it also helped me get accepted into the pre-osteopathic medicine program at WVSOM in Lewisburg. For all of you college-bound students, freshmen to seniors alike, when your teacher marks points off of a paper because you did not use the proper format or cite something correctly, do not disregard it. Follow those instructions word for word. You'll thank them later, I promise. When a teacher tells you to work something out a specific way, just do it. Even though that method might differ from how you'll do it in the future, showing every step and being able to reproduce the work in a specific manner is absolutely essential. You'll thank them later, I promise. Every time your teacher emphasizes to show your work, do it without an argument. Not only does it demonstrate understanding, it solidifies the information in your head and it can pull you out of countless situations that may present themselves in college. Take it from the chemistry major who spends most of her time keeping lab notebooks and writing lab reports. It all counts. Every day I thank my teachers here at Westside for making me do something that I never thought I would do again. Because just when you think that you won't do it again, you have to. The most valuable lessons I learned at my time here at Westside High cannot be taught from a book, though. To this day, I always remember to double and triple check my grammar and spelling prior to posting on social media, Mr. Stewart. Before believing anything or taking somebody's word for it, I always ask three words. Where's your proof, Miss Plumley? As I was writing what I was going to say today, I made sure to have all of my ducks in a row because filler words such as um and yeah are now major pet peeves of mine. And I can hear Miss Steffi counting in the back of my head. Regardless of what the situation may be, I always know to put my best foot forward and approach it with an open mind because there's always something valuable to take from it. Mr. Dunn. That's just four of the many examples that I acquired over the years. And there's simply not enough time to name them all because every single teacher and educator that I had in this building all instilled something in me. <laughs> However, there are three lessons that are part of the spirit and privilege of being a Westside Renegade, and I learned these very quickly. One, stay classy. Not everything will always go your way, and that's all right. Two, always be there to help someone in need. Serve your community, your family, and your friends without hesitation. Just a smile to someone in the hallway can go a very long way. And I believe 
that in the last 24 hours, this student body has exhibited this multiple times, and I could not be more proud. Three, give it your all. Renegades do not, and I repeat, do not give up on anything. This school has been immensely blessed with teachers, principals, coaches, counselors, secretaries, etc., who genuinely care about each and every student. That's each and every one of you. Out of everything I have mentioned, not a single one would have been possible without them, and many of them are in the room right now. They all work tirelessly and in their spare time nonetheless to ensure that we had every opportunity possible to get involved and do something. They have all personally invested in every single student who walks through those doors, and I am honored to say that I am one of those students. Although I've become a Concord mountain lion, I am proud to stand in front of you guys today as a Westside Renegade. Everything that this school has instilled in me has transcended into my college life, and for that, I am beyond thankful. There is 100% truth in a certain motto that many of you will not understand until this, you take this tassel from the right side to the left to put it closer to your heart. But let me serve as an example of this truth. Once a renegade, always a renegade. Thank you. First of all, let me say, you guys owe them a round of applause because they are your community, they are your resources, and these are the people backing you. They're backing your success, they're backing your plans, they're backing your path from here on out. These are the people who are your warriors outside of this school, and your teachers are the ones that are here now. So I want you to give them a round of applause. My second thing to say is that these people elected to be here. Caitlin and I elected to be here. We were asked to come, but we didn't have to. We came because there are stories, there are things that you guys need to hear. And my biggest, my biggest fear was that I wasn't going to say anything that was of use to you. I wasn't going to say anything that mattered because you guys are tired. It is homecoming week. Everybody was out last night. But I got news for you. I was out last night too with you. I came to watch you guys. I got up at 4.30 this morning to turn in work that I had today that I was supposed to turn in during class, but I missed that class because I'm here. <laughs> and I did it to write this speech, which I'm apparently not reading. But, because when I was over there, God has some things for you guys to hear. One, it does not matter how poor you are, you can go to college. There is no amount of money that will keep you from it if you work for it. My mom is a single mother. She is a bus driver. She makes $22,000 a year. That's not a whole lot. Statistically speaking, that is 10,000 above the poverty line. And I had to work for it. I knew that she was never gonna be able to pay for it. I had to work for it. I had to put those scholarship applications in. I had to apply to those schools. I had to put in the extracurricular time. I had to put in my effort. I had to do everything that you could possibly do to go to college because she couldn't do it for me. So that is my story to you. I went to a private college for two years. If you are anything like me, you can do it too. You can make that path. You can go to those places. Nothing is out of your reach. Yes, it's going to be hard and it's not always going to be fun and you're going to be scared, but it's going to pay off. And my other point is that future that you don't see is not that far away. Almost two years ago, I was a senior sitting where you're sitting. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what my path was from here on out. And years before that, I was a freshman, a sophomore. I had no idea what college I was going to go to. I had no idea what college to apply to. But the point is, you can do it. I have stories of how awesome my college experience was. I have stories of the mental breakdowns my mom had to keep me from and the ones that she witnessed. FYI and PS, learn to time manage because time management will be your best friend. Absolutely your best friend. And another thing, how hard it is here 
exemplifies how hard it's going to be. You won't have your professors holding your hand, and yes, some professors are a little more lax than others, but you won't have that teacher who says, hey, I know you, I know your personal story. You went to my town, you go to my school, I care about you. And yes, they'll care, but they don't know your story. These people know you, they see you in the hallways, they see your good days, they see your bad days, and they still care for you. They'll still write recommendation letters for you. And I know the school schedule has changed here, and a lot of people are upset about it, because it's tough. And trust me, I get it, I was in every possible AP class that she was in, because for the longest time we weren't friends, and she was my competitor. So, yeah, you can laugh, you can all laugh. We weren't friends until junior year, and now I live with her. But the point is, if you can do it here, you can do it out there. If you can handle the mental breakdowns, if you can handle the endless work, if you can handle the extracurriculars and the hours of school that you have to put in, you can do it. You will make it out there. How hard it is in here, if you can, if you can make this happen, and if you can get to graduation, you can graduate, and 100% of you absolutely have the possibility to do it, you can make it out there. For example, yeah, I went to a private college, right? First year was absolutely insane. I can tell you I learned how to make a C and be okay with it. Critical thinking, FYI, is not what you think it is. It is really hard. <laughs> and I, my sophomore year, I joined a sorority, and I encourage you to explore Greek life because Greek life is not what you see in the media. It is not what you see in the movies. It is what you make it, and it is a lot of fun if you make it fun. I loved every second of it. And also, furthermore, you have to learn to follow the plan that God has set before you, no matter what and against all odds regardless of what anyone says. The beginning of this year, God said, you're, for your junior year, you're going to live with your best friend and you're going to move home. I thought he was crazy. <laughs> I said, what? No. And the point is, we made it. I got the text from her to come speak today while I was in class and while she was at our apartment. We made it here. So my, my last words to you are that this, these people around you they are your community. The people last night and the people on the streets yesterday, they came to watch you guys. They came to watch the floats that you guys made. They came to see the dances last night. They came to see the cheers. They came to cheer you on. You, they were there for you. And this community that you have here will always be here for you. I know a lot of people get frustrated with this town because of what it is. They get frustrated with the smallness of it. They get frustrated with the flaws of it. But this is home. This is your home, regardless. And what I want you to do when you go out into the world, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, they're going to hear that twang in your voice like you hear it in mine. They're going to ask you where you're from. And I want you to proudly puff up your chest and you tell them that you are from Wyoming County in all of the country accent that you have and you went to Westside High School because I guarantee you they'll know where you're from. If they're from this state, they know you. Because this is a place to be proud of. This program is a thing to be proud of. These people who have your back that you don't even see is a thing to be proud of. So being a renegade is being classy. Being a renegade is never giving up. Being a renegade is pursuing your dreams above all odds, especially for me. I had to pursue my dreams. I had to make my own path. God paved it for me, and I went where he stood. So that's what it means to be a renegade, and you need to get that in your heart. Because once you're a renegade now, you are always a renegade. And that's why I'm standing here today talking to you guys. Because I care about your future. They all care about your future. Those teachers in the back, they really care about your future. So thank you for allowing me to speak. You all have a wonderful day. And never give up fighting for what you want in life. So we've heard a lot about college, we've heard about four-year college, about great football programs, we've heard a lot about the arts. I would be remiss if I did not mention to you the opportunities in your Career Technical Education Center as well. You know, today there are three states in the country, and maybe West Virginia is one of those, Texas, Virginia, Colorado, do you know that graduates of two-year highly technical degreed programs are making more money than students graduating from four-year degrees in the, in, in the mean average in those, in those states. So I think the bottom line is for all of us here today, as we sum up this morning, 
pursue your passion, think big as Coach Pruitt said, figure out what it is, that path that you want to pursue the rest of your lives. Start thinking about that now, it's not too soon. You're going to hear a lot more about communities and schools. First Lady Justice, we're so grateful that you've brought that opportunity to us. Uh, to her right is Deborah Sullivan, one of our state board members, and she chairs the Communities and Schools Guy, uh, Advisory Council. She's been a principal for 28 years at a high school in West Virginia as well, so she, she shares that passion for education. You're going to hear a lot more about communities and schools. Stay tuned. It's a great program, and we hope all of you will think about taking the opportunity to take advantage of that particular program. As I was driving in today from Logan, came from Charleston via Hurricane, I was in Doddridge County last night, I was in Morgantown the night before. There's no more beautiful place than when I began to drive through Wyoming County, your hills, your mountains, the flats on the way in, beautiful, beautiful. You're, you're so blessed here. And you, are, you, are, you already are a strong, strong school community that we're proud to join. And with that said, as I think about all that natural beauty, Randall, that, that we saw uh, as I was driving in, I sure would appreciate it if you would listen to his voice leading all of us in a chorus of Country Roads. Okay. Where's Mr. Stewart? I want to be a renegade. Okay guys, then sign me up. Uh, I just want to say thank you for having us and I want to echo some words from Dr. Payne. I think the most thoughtful, genuine, gracious, giving, and caring person I've met since I've been home is right there. And I appreciate you letting us be a part of this program. Because let me tell you, I think the greatest accomplishment ever is to be born a West Virginia. And it is an advantage. So, all right. Sorry, Coach, but the Mountaineers have just won again. What do we do? What do we say? Here we go. Grab our, because you better win tonight. Are you going to win? What are you going to take me? Just, coach, get you fired up better than that. <laughs> hey, if those good looking women size and Kate, I can't. Oh, <laughs> tell them, get them the bigger hole. Don't even be shot. <laughs> well, you met the wrong person here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Almost heaven. West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountain. Shenandoah River. Like this older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like the breeze, country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mount Mama. 